Hello, it's Peter Wright and Kathleen Beauvais with another episode of the Yakking Show Harmony Channel. And this is the channel for your path to wholeness. And we bring you expert guests who give you tips and ideas to have, help you have a better, healthier life and endure the interesting times we seem to be heading into. We do that with our guests, as I say. But first, let's introduce co-host Kathleen Beauvais. Hi, Kathleen. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing great, Peter. Thank you so much. And thank you all so very much for tuning in to our show. We so appreciate having you. And as Peter mentioned, we do have another special guest with us today. We're very privileged to welcome Casey Weiss to the show. Hello, Casey. Welcome. How are you? Hello. Thank you so much for having me. Now, Casey is a holistic nutritionist, as well as a wellness and mindset coach. So let's just jump right in. Casey, can you tell us what a holistic nutritionist is? And mindset, and mindset, that's hard to say, mindset coaches, and <laughs> what sets you apart from other coaches? Yeah, so basically, I am a certified nutritionist. I have multiple certifications in that space. And the thing, though, is, is that what I recognize from my journey and the journey when I work with clients is, yes, it's so important for you to understand nutrition, how to fuel your body, and how food can really help you with energy, and how it's so much more than calories. But at the end of the day, a lot of us know by and large, like what foods are healthy and what aren't, but there's a greater reason why we don't eat them. The, the reason why is we're stressed. The reason why is we don't have proper boundaries. The reason why is because we don't have other coping mechanisms. So even though we know eating the tub of ice cream isn't, you know, quote healthy, we're still doing it. So Yes, there are ways for us to understand nutrition so that we can, you know, not have the same type of craving so we can have stable energy, stable blood sugar, helpful for our hormone, all those amazing things. I can talk about nutrition all day, but at the same time, the nutrition goes nowhere if you don't have your mindset in the right place. And mm -hmm. mindset sounds like, you know, wooey, whatever. People are like, okay, what the heck does that mean? But it really is what grounds us. And it's, um, you know, people are becoming more aware of how our mental health and mental state affects so many aspects of our life. And especially, you know, I specifically coach women, the way that we have been brought up and the way that diet culture and mixed messages have been pervasive in our whole lives. It's so important to really unpeel the layers of the onion, the banana, whatever, whatever you like, <laughs> and really start to understand the root cause of our eating mm. behaviors and therefore how we can change them. Mm. Okay. So <clears throat> Casey, it, it's an observation. And I lived most of my life in Africa where apart from some very wealthy native people, most native people are certainly not overweight, but many of them live to 80 and 90 years old on what we would consider poor diets and living in houses, no electricity and no running water and no indoor sanitation, and they remain pretty healthy. So what's the difference? Why in the affluent societies, and it's not just North America, I mean, it's a, it's similar in Europe, perhaps not as bad. What what went wrong, I would guess, in the early to in the mid part of the 20th century, we seem to get the switch where more and more North Americans became overweight and stopped leading healthy lifestyles. What happened? Yeah. So a lot of that has to do with the beauty of convenience. <laughs> um, so okay. the thing is, is that first of all, um, you know, we have more and more processed foods. We're getting further and mm -hmm. further away from our cultural roots. So yeah. very popular now, there's actually a documentary that's very popular now. It's like a series called, I think it's called Living to 100, or it's about mm -hmm. the blue zones. And blue zones are yeah. something that I've studied for years. It's very, but the thing is, is that a lot of people get hung up. What's the food that each of these blue zone people eat? Okay, yes, like, yeah, we, it's great to understand that we want to have like a plant forward diet, having, you know, more whole foods in general. That's, and a great focus for us to have. But what we notice from these societies is really the importance of connection, of community, mm -hmm. of lifelong ways of having movement in our body. That's not just like, okay, I go to the gym for 30 minutes and then I'm done. I have my trainer who trains me for 30 minutes and then I sit on my butt the rest of the day, right? So we see how, you know, the culture and how those societies just lead their lives so differently. Mm -hmm. um, and fast forward, you know, not just fast forward, obviously those societies are, are alive today, but when we're talking, you were talking about the difference with time, you know, today as it's convenient, you have Uber Eats delivering, you don't, it's so easy to not walk places. Um, we have more and more sprawling cities, especially like in the US. And so 
it just becomes almost like a badge of honor to be able to have this convenience and to be able to afford those things. And we find other countries wanting to emulate that as, you know, that's the gold standard mm-hmm. to have those like process, you know, shiny looking foods and to not have to work for our own food. And as a result, we are seeing a regression in our health and in our health outcomes. And also there is such great development um, from the space in terms of medicine and medication. And I think that's amazing. But at the same time, there is so much more focus, especially, and I'll speak to US because that's where I live. There's so much more focus on not on preventative healthcare, but like once you get to the point of you, You're good, yeah. yeah. And so, and again, like, obviously I'm, it's amazing the things that are being developed, but like, why aren't we putting focus and why does healthcare focus and cover the medicine once you're sick versus like the nutrition education versus the proactive measures. And that's something that, um, you know, I would love to see, (laughs) see, um, being changed and is something that we are just not doing enough of. Mm, Yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, Profit, the word profit comes into that equation, unfortunately, too. Anyway, (laughs) we won't get on that rabbit hole at the moment. So back to to Kathleen. Yeah. So Casey, is it possible to eat, to continue to eat the foods that we love and still maintain a proper weight? Yes. (laughs) Yes, yes. But it's a lot. Maybe it looks different, though, than what you think. Mm -hmm. So you may like, I love ice cream. I'll talk, so I always, I always bring up ice cream. So I love ice cream, but I had quite a journey with food. So I had a range of different eating disorders, um, starting from like severe restriction and to then where I was getting in cycle of overeating after having years of district of restriction, messing up myself mentally, hormonally, all the works. And the thing is that for a period of time, I thought enjoying them the ice cream was then like eating the whole pint because I had had so much restriction for so many years that like, that idea of like finally eating it, I was like, oh my God, I'm like eating the whole thing. And then obviously I feel like crap after them, right? And then feel like icky in my own body. So what we need to understand is, yes, you can be able to eat the foods, but what is truly the way you can eat them that is going to give you enjoyment? Mm-hmm. So you want to enjoy them in the moment. You want to enjoy them. I call it my 10 to 10, 10 rule. You want to enjoy it, be, be able to reflect on that food, being like 10 minutes later, be like, that was good. 10 hours later, that was good. 10 days, 10 weeks, whatever. whatever. Like you can reflect back. And I don't want you to be thinking about one eating moment for that <laughs> period of time. Um, but the thing is, is that the idea of like moderation really does look different for everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I will say is there are kind of extremes that have developed. So because of this like dieting extreme, then there's the other end of the spectrum of like, we don't care about food and like, just don't worry. You know, we don't have to worry about health. We don't have to worry about our bodies. And I love the body positivity movement. I love that people are more accepting of different sizes. This has nothing to do with that. The thing is, is that if you were just saying to heck with it, what are you saying to heck with? Are you saying to heck with dieting? Cool. But are you saying to heck with your health? that's not so cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, you, we want to make sure that you feel good in your body. And I think sometimes, especially when you're, especially if you're trying to like get over this, like dieting yo-yo cycle, which is a lot of what I work with, yeah. you can might be in this like area of how, to, I don't know how to navigate it because I can either have the extreme of not caring at all or caring way too much to the point where it's obsessive mm-hmm. and controls every aspect of my life. Right. So how can I meet in the middle? And I, most of the people who want, who work with me do want to lose weight but we don't count calories. We don't count macros, whatever. It's about changing the mindset, learning how we can eat in a way that makes us feel satisfied. So you can eat your food, move the heck on and not be like thinking about food all the time. Cause if you're not, you can eat the Twizzlers, you can eat the chips, you can eat what it is or the crunchy bars. My, my, my husband was just talking about crunch. Cause that's a Canadian candy. I was like, what are you talking about? Like, are you talking about crunch bars? He's like, no crunchy bars. <laughs> For this is specific candy. <laughs> um, but you can, you can eat those, but like, how can you round it out in a way that's going to make you feel mm-hmm. satisfied so that you can in, actually enjoy the experience? Right. Mm-hmm. So, so Pretty let's good. talk about nutrition for a moment in terms of, of what, what does that look like on a daily basis for somebody in terms yeah. of what they're consuming? Are they consuming proteins, animal proteins? Are they consu- like, what is it that they should have breakfast for lunch and for suppers? I love this question. And 
I'm sure you'll probably can assume when we say there's going to be no one thing or like one specific way of eating for anyone. I will say that um, protein is definitely important. I know you brought up protein specifically. You do not have to eat animal protein, but you can definitely eat animal protein in a very healthy way too. So what I want everyone to focus on, and this is like my main, like it, instead of thinking of calories, instead of like obsessing whatnot, I, every single one of your meals, I want you to make sure that you have protein, you have healthy fats and fiber rich carbohydrates. If you have that at every single meal, this will help to balance your blood sugar, which is going to be ideal for your energy, for your hormones, for your satiety, for you to just like feel freaking good and be able to promote longevity. What I notice, especially with women, and again, that is the demographic that I work with is they think like eating one egg is eating enough protein. Mm -hmm. Eating an egg is six grams of protein. You should be getting like 20, 30, maybe more grams of protein per meal. I was just telling my, my, my mom, you know, she knew about this, but then I, she was like, I, she didn't used to live here and now she just moved to California. And so I'm like, you don't need enough protein. She, she was like, and that's like her big thing now. She's like, what has protein? What was She's for everything has been now looking into that. And we don't need to get obsessed. We don't need to get stressed about it, but protein creates as amino acids, which are building blocks for so many important parts of the way that our biology works. And it also helps us to be very satisfied. And that's one major thing that I notice that people are missing in their diet, especially women do not focus as much on protein. Now, then on top of that, obviously, as I said, having fiber rich carbohydrates, what does that look like? Plant foods, beautiful diversity of all different types of plant foods. So what could that look like for if we want to go through a sample of days of food to help to illustrate to people. So when you wake up in the morning, I see a lot of people having coffee on an empty stomach and then maybe some oatmeal. No, no, no. What we're doing is our, we're at a fasted state where our cortisol is already its highest. We're putting caffeine, which is just going to like wreak, wreak havoc basically at our hormones. What we want to do, and then we, we follow it up with oatmeal, which oats, whole grain, like that's cool. But they, without like anything else added to it, it's pretty much carbohydrates without any of the other things with it. So say you like oats, that's great. How can we be able to add Greek yogurt into them so we can add some protein, peanut butter to add some fat, right? Maybe some flaxseed for some fiber. Great way to start our day. Or maybe we could have an egg scramble with a side of whole grain toast with avocado. So you can see different ways of mixing that. Um, for lunch, you know, people think like I have to have a salad. Absolutely not. But what's great about a salad is we're getting a bunch of different colors of different veggies, which are forms of fiber. So how can we be able to maybe put that in a wrap that we um, enjoy more, put some cheese on, get some good source of protein. Um, maybe instead of having a boring, you know, green salad, we decide to experiment with different types of grains. And then for dinner, you know, being able to, be, to have pasta, but thinking about, okay, if I have pasta, how can I add to it so that we can have protein, so that we can have fat, so that we can have fiber-rich carbohydrates? What I really want people to focus on is this addition mindset. Because so much of us are like, what do I have to take out? And that is stressful. And that just leads to this lack of scarcity. This leads to this mindset of, oh my gosh, if I have to eat healthy, I have to take things out. That's not sustainable. Well, we can think about what we can add, then we naturally crowd out the other things. So mm -hmm. if we're adding all these, so for example, you take that pasta. Normally, if you ate pasta you and it's just pasta, so let's just say butter noodles, delicious. If you just wanted butter noodles, probably have to eat a lot because you're just eating the butter noodles. But say we decide, hmm, why don't we add some steamed spinach in there, chop up some chicken. Um, and we use, um, you know, grass fed butter, healthy fats, whatever there. Think about it. Like you're going to probably need to eat less of the pasta because you're having these other things mm -hmm. with it. Mm -hmm. And it's not saying like, I couldn't eat the pasta. I had to use a measuring cup. No, it just kind of naturally happens. And that then we're able to, as I said, like crowd out in a way without restriction. Right. Right. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's interesting. What's your thoughts on... <clears throat> the interval between supper and breakfast. There's one school mm. of thought says you should have food in your gut. And there's another school of thinking that says you, you need to try and go 12 hours without anything going through your system apart from liquid. So what's your thoughts on those two opposites? Yes. So basically, I it is different. Well, there's intermittent fasting is very popular mechanism these days. Men can get away with intermittent fasting. The studies, the very... Um, 
great, there's great studies that show great results, but they're done on men. And so men and postmenopausal women can do bouts of intermittent fasting and it can be beneficial for their health. However, mm-hmm. if we're talking, and again, this is my main demographic is women. Um, and I work with postmenopausal women, but women who are not that stage of life should definitely not be fasting. Um, okay. It is putting too much st- undue stress on their body that it's, that is not going to be beneficial. And what that actually ends up leading to is it ends up leading to like other health complications and often can lead to actually increased weight gain kind of more later down the line, mm-hmm. um, which is a lot of times what they're trying to avoid by doing the fasting. Sure. What I will say is 12 hours is though what I would recommend, but that's not hard. Like if you finish, you're having your dinner at eight and you're having your breakfast at eight. Mm. That's not like extreme. So extreme. what I, if people want to, um, I will say that having breakfast within an hour of waking up is what I do recommend. That's the best way to start your day. I, it's, it will help full for you hormonally. Also satiety wise. And I, we, we all know people, maybe you guys are some of them that are like, I'll oh, skip breakfast. Like it's an easy meal to skip. And then you think that like, okay, you help to like save the calories for the day. But, and that's one of the main changes that I make like first off with the people who come to me. They always are having small breakfast. And I'm like, I want you to eat more. Um, we talk about like breakfast that could work for them, whatnot. And they're like, really eat this? I was like, we're going to easy way into it. I'm not going to force feed you. But like, let's let's try this. And they're like, oh my God, I had no idea, Casey. I'm so satisfied for the day. Like now I can go to lunch and I'm not ravenous. I can focus at work. I'm not ravenous. So I can make a better choice at lunch. And because I make a better choice at lunch, I can make a better choice at dinner. And it's so cyclical. Um, but if you are wanting to try some longer periods of time. Like say you do want to try a 14 hour fast, even in any of these like life stages, women, men, whatever, just having your dinner earlier versus having your breakfast later is what I recommend. So if you want to have it like at six and then, you know, that you wake up at whatever seven and you have your breakfast at eight, but that is, is fine. Like just having dinner earlier, but definitely still having breakfast within an hour of waking up is, is what I recommend. And that is, as I said, it's the studies and that's like a whole nother topic of how scientific studies are done on men and yes. rarely on women and how that really skews uh, so many things from dosages and medications. Of course. To, yeah. So, so <laughs> a, whole, a whole nother thing. <laughs> I, I have uh, a yeah. question, actually, if, uh, if you don't mind, Peter, I just want to okay. jump in. No, so, jump in. With respect to people that are doing the intermittent fasting or are not eating as much in the morning and just, you know, they're, they're, they're kind of off balance that way. And then you jump in and say, no, no, I want you to eat more for breakfast. And I want you to, you know, eat. So a lot, oftentimes I'm hearing that nutritionists are saying you're not eating enough. Mm-hmm. So when the person starts on the protocol that you provide them in terms of eating a half decent breakfast in the morning and whatnot. Do you find that they initially gain weight because they're so accustomed to not eating that much food? How does, what happens with that? No, because oh. they feel like they're eating more and they'll either eating more at meals a lot of times or at certain meals, but they are then naturally not snacking as much. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're having more energy to do other activities. They also are able to, go to meals out without this kind of effort, I call it the effort mentality <laughs> because they're eating enough and they're understanding how they can eat out in a way that like honors their cravings and, but also their goals. Right. So no, I, I will though say that some clients will lose weight more quickly to start. It just depends on what you're coming into me with. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, where some, it may, I always say like my, you're not going to like go on, work with me and lose 10 pounds in two weeks. Cause that's also, if you lost weight that quickly, that's a problem. <laughs> uh, that's not a sustainable way to be able to approach your nutrition, your health. So wh- part of what I say is that for a lot of people, the first phase of working with me is honestly the unlearning phase. Like how can we unlearn the behaviors and habits that we had? That doesn't mean weight gain, but it doesn't necessarily mean weight loss at first. Mm-hmm. Um, it can, and and it it has many times, but that's why when I work with clients one-on-one, it's not like we're working for two weeks. We work for with each other for three months um, so that we can be able to accomplish our goals and really set them up for success so that they can understand how to move forward. It's not like, okay, now I have to 
every year restart with Casey because I, you know, messed up and I don't know what to do. It's like, no, you, you build the skills, but that's why we have to take a slower approach. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. Uh, just um, what I do is I, I fast for 24 hours every Tuesday. So I don't eat from Monday night supper until a later supper on Tuesday. Yeah. I do it. I do it as much for the mental discipline as for the um, nutritional aspect, because I think it's important to have some sort of mind control. And then I, I don't, I have supper normally before six in the evening and I don't have breakfast till seven the next morning. And I go out for 40 minute walk before my breakfast. So that's uh, probably not the best thing to do. (laughs) But anyway, that's, it seems to work for me. Well, you, again, as a male, there's exactly. it, as I, it is different and at, you uh, doing um a 24 hour fast once a day actually is, a, is it is different um we have as I said my audience is different so no, sure. uh, that's how it is and yeah I I do have different recommendations for for men um and especially depending on stages of life the thing is is just generally speaking you seem to you seem to enjoy this process overall yeah. and one thing is is that what I bring up with people is to what expense, right? Like you are enjoying this process. It is helping you with your health and your longevity. And it's a part of your routine, Mm -hmm. but some people are like, so obsessed. Maybe it's getting a certain number on the scale. Maybe it's doing something a certain way. It's like to what end? So you could lose four more pounds and then be obsessed with food constantly and keep having to track everything in your, like till you're 95, you know, (laughs) like like, what, you know what I mean? So, um, and that's what I I find that like diet culture has made us believe that like it should be that oh. way, and that's not normal. <laughs> that's so not normal. No, for sure. Um, yeah. I mean, maybe it's yeah. So, so um, tell tell our audience about your private coaching. What are the first steps when someone comes to you and says, "I've got a problem"? Be it I know that I'm not eating properly, or I'm overweight, or um, say say a woman whose kids have fled the nest and she is not looking after herself properly, what's the first step? What do you focus on right up front? Yeah. So when people come to work with me, um, first do a deep dive, just understanding what their goals are, because it's not for me to Mm -hmm. decide what their goals are. Right. So I want to understand their history. And this is so important. And I find that like, especially how pervasive coaches are in the online space, not doing enough research and understanding of like where these clients are coming from, what their history is with food, with the relationship with food, with their body, because I work with all that. So really trying to get a full history and understanding what their goals are and what their current environment is. I like to meet clients where they are. I work with teachers. I like, I have a client who is training, um, in the Navy right now. Like I have clients who are run again, whatever, uh, all different ages with five kids, what, some that are, you know, 20 that do not have children. <laughs> so well, I need to understand where they are. And what one part of like what we always do in terms of in our first week is for me to get an understanding of what they're eating too. Mm-hmm. So yes, I need to understand their lifestyle, their goals, their past, but then they provide me like a food diary. Now this doesn't mean like half a cup of quinoa and three tablespoons. No, it's like, I usually actually have them take pictures of their food because it's easier for them and mm-hmm. they don't have to like get obsessive there. So I can understand and where they are with their food. And then from there we can fill in the gaps. And I have them actually do that before their first session. Cause I want to be able to hit the first session, like running and not have to like waste their time being like, okay, now this next week, cause I know time is precious and like working with me is an investment. And so I want to make sure that I can give them the most information. Um, and then from there we can create a customized plan. Um, so a custom plan does not mean a meal plan, a menu plan. No, I do provide mm-hmm. like plenty of resources, um, to help whether they want meal prep or they want recipe ideas. I will, <laughs> I've been known to call up grocery stores in their local area to find if they have the certain, certain foods for them, or maybe they are at a stage of life that they want a meal delivery service. I can help them pick certain things, but what my whole goal with coaching is that you work with me and then you're able to move on from working with me and never have to work with me again. <laughs> like, uh, that is mm-hmm. my, right. that is my goal. Okay. Um, it's not like with the Weight Watchers where you see people subscribe and they like lose the weight and then they come back and they come back and they come back. Yeah. Right. Um, so the, and that is why it's private, fully customized so that I can work with their, you know, specific goals. Um, and you know, whether, whether they're pregnant, postpartum, whatever it is, that's something sailing. I'm actually just seven weeks now postpartum. So that's a very, <laughs> very top Congratulations. Yeah. 
Thank you. This is my first so, uh, p- podcast interview po- um, post maternity leave. So very fun. <laughs> oh, very good. Uh, good. So you also include exercise and supplementation protocols as part of your approach to overall wellness. Tell us about the types of exercise you recommend as well as the supplements. And out of curiosity, is apple cider vinegar something you would recommend? (laughs) Yeah. So basically for exercise, um, I work with people and their schedules and their needs. So I'm not going to create like a split and create the specific exercise plan, but we will work together to figure out how exercise will fit their lifestyle. And I always recommend having some form of cardio and some form of Mm strength-based training. So cardio can look like maybe we have a certain step goal for walking, or maybe there's other types of cardiovascular activity, but that's very important. There's kind of a focus these days on strength training and like how that is what gets you your physique. And yes, strength training is essential for health. We need to make sure we have the balance of both. And so I help to navigate that. Um, I do have certifications in fitness, but I am not a certified specific personal trainer. So, um, we work on that. And then from a supplementation perspective, I'm all about food first and people spend so much money on supplements and then they have to spend it for years. I once went to a holistic practitioner who literally got put me on to 10 different supplements. And I'm like, what? Like, this is not sustainable. So I want to focus on food first, but unfortunately, I actually, my background before um, going back for to study nutrition, I worked in agriculture. So I'm, and I would visit farms, visit farms in Canada, lentils and and pulses all over in Canada and all over the country um, in the U S as well. And our soils are so depleted of nutrients. They are not what they once were. So we cannot Mm -hmm. get like the minerals and nutrients that we once were able to from food. So there are potentials for having supplementation, but not just to take things willy nilly. And that's why I I never recommend supplements right after that. It's really looking to what your specific needs are um, and really trying to focus on food-based supplementation. Um, and supplements in general. Um, So that's kind of where they're. And from apple cider vinegar, apple cider vinegar for sure can help with blood sugar maintenance. And I really focus on blood sugar balance with the way that I advise of eating. So there are ways that we could take apple cider vinegar before a meal to help to blunt a glucose spike. But it's not like a magic cure-all. People are like, this is your fat loss cure. Like, absolutely not. Um, But yeah, like if it's something that you enjoy, just be careful, take it with a straw so it doesn't ruin the enamel of your teeth. Um, And it could definitely be helpful to take before more of a high carbohydrate meal. Mm -hmm. What I will say though, is the best thing to do is I say, like have put your carbs, like wrap them in a blanket. So when you have carb, instead of having simple carbohydrates, like even if you're having like ice cream, like, could you add peanuts on top as like extra fat? And that helps and helps with glucose management. Mm-hmm. Um, or we say, think of this classic example, something like a Twizzler, that's literally pure sugar, maybe having it with almonds, you know, or making sure that you have it right after a meal so that you kind of have this like buffer of a real meal before you're having the simple carbohydrate. But then again, another tool you can utilize is also the apple cider vinegar. Right. Mm, interesting. Yeah. So here's one for, for you, Casey. I, I've read more more than one source that says most mammals live to about five times the the age of physical maturity. And that holds true with horses, dogs, uh, cattle, and quite a few other mammals. So if you apply that to humans, that most humans should live between 100 and 120, as it comes back to your blue zone thing. So do you think that's attainable? For a lot of people, I think that they're for most people, not with the way that we're eating, the way we're treating our bodies, the way that we're exercising. And a lot of the thing is, is that we focus so much on just the food. But what we know is that our mental health and how stress affects longevity and how stress Mm -hmm. affects oxidation. And we want, that's why there's so much focus on antioxidants. Antioxidants help are the antidote to oxidation when oxidation is what leads to aging. So that incorporates stress and the way we talk about ourselves, the way we treat ourselves. And so the mental health cannot be separated from the physical health. They are one in the same. Okay. And so that is why going back to your full circle here, going back to your very first question of what's a nutritionist and mindset coach. Well, it's kind of putting those two together. 
I do believe that we have the potential there, but we have a long ways to go in terms of how we approach our health and our wellness and not segmenting it. And what I noticed so much on social media is like five tips to lower your cortisol today, or, you know, which is, it's great that we're having more awareness, but people just want that quick thing that they can do. And it's just not that it's so much more complicated, Mm -hmm. so much more nuanced. And instead of letting that overwhelm you think about how that could actually be exciting and fun. Like we can actually tackle Mm. multiple birds with one stone. If we kind of zoom out for a second, instead of being like, Oh my gosh, Casey, like what's the one food I need to eat right now to lose belly fire. What's the one food I need to eat right now to de-stress or what's the one supplement. It's like, okay, let's take a step back and have a little fun with it. Use our addition mindset, kind of focus and scope out. And we can then therefore, be holistic with our health and wellness, not just like lose the weight, but also promote longevity, also promote energy, also promote hormonal balance all in one with Mm -hmm. the way that we're eating and treating ourselves. Right. Well, Peter, we are running short on time. Running short on time. Yeah. I know you have a burning question. Why don't we, why don't we jump right to that one? Okay. Here goes the burning question for you, Casey. It, 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 it's a variation on a question that we ask all the successful people that come on the show. And in your case, let, let's relate it more to health and nutrition. Is there, when people come to you or when all the people you've come across in, in your career, is there one mindset or habit or characteristic that separates those who uh, live fairly healthy lives and well-balanced lives compared to those that really need your services? Or is it a lot more complicated than that? So you're saying people who have success, what is the, like, what is the mindset there? Mm. Yes. Yeah. They know that health is more than just weight. I would say ah, that's the big thing. Okay. And that doesn't okay. have to mean, again, like most people who come to me do want to lose weight. And there's sure uh, there's nothing wrong with wanting to lose weight, but it has to be for the right reasons. Or it has to yep. come with a good approach. And so if the if your focus is just health for the sake of weight loss it's going to be really hard to get you out of mindset. And some, and I was that, I was that too. So I get it. But for years, I just thought like being healthy was being as small as possible. Mm-hmm. And it was ended up being very detrimental to my health. Mm-hmm. So once I was able to make that switch, that's when everything changed for me. Um, and my life changed from not just my physical health to my, but my mental health as well. So if we can have that reframe, and unfortunately that's not a reframe you can push on anyone. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. have to come on sure. your own and realize it on right. your own. Right. Yeah, no, very yeah. good point. Good point. Back to you, Kathleen. How do people contact you? Well, people can contact me the best way. My best platform is Instagram. Um, Instagram. People can message me directly on there. They can also email email me there um, or like email me um, just the, with my link there. I'll provide my link so you guys can do, do that as well. So of ways to contact me. Um, I... As I said here, I just got back from maternity leave. So I have some slots out open for private coaching. I will have some group coaching um, programs opening up as well. And yeah, I would love to chat with any of you guys about just really any questions that you have. And I will provide um, you guys a link to for your listeners to be able to get my top nutrition tips video and my stop overeating workbook so that they can download that and be able to kind of dive into what we talked about today. Oh, fantastic. Excellent. Yes. Good. And for our audio listeners, all those details will be in the description on whatever platform, <clears throat> excuse me, you're listening to this on. Thank you, Casey. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. It was a pleasure having you today, Casey. And thank you also very much for tuning in once again. If anyone is interested in being a guest on our show, we invite you to visit us at theyackingshow.com. All you need to do is click on the contacts tab where we you will find a short application form and we'd love to hear from you. And Peter, would you like to talk about our newsletter? Absolutely. You've seen another really interesting guest with some great tips on leading a healthy life today. So to make sure you don't miss out on future guests, hop onto the website, as Kathleen said, yackingshow.com. You'll find a form to sign up for the newsletter. We only send you one a week and we tell you who's on this week and who's coming next week. So then you don't miss out. That's it for me. Goodbye. Thank you so much once again. And uh, until next time, take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.